Have you ever gone mad because you've lost your keys? But then, as luck would have it, you find them in the door. And that's just one advanced use of the word would. We're going to look at five advanced uses of the word would in this lesson. And these are uses that you probably won't find in textbooks because they are C2 English level. That's IELTS 8 or IELTS 9. The first one is using would meaning being lucky, then giving instructions, stating preferences, showing disbelief, and stating potential. Let's go into the classroom to look at these in more detail. So first of all, as luck would have it, and we spoke about this key that we were looking for and we couldn't find it, and then as luck would have it, it was already in the door, thank goodness. And this is a use of this phrase, as luck would have it. And this means introducing a lucky event. So if something lucky happens, you weren't expecting it, you can use this phrase, as luck would have it. How do you use it? Well, it's a set phrase, it's always the same, and you just use the clause afterwards. For example, in the sentence we have here, we started with but, then as luck would have it, all on its own, and then a normal sentence afterwards. It was already in the door. So it works like an adverb. Imagine replacing it with a word like incredibly or amazingly. It works in exactly the same way and it can go into the sentence in the same places. Let's practice using this phrase in a short conversation. I'm bored with my job. I want a new one. Well, as luck would have it, there's a job going on your street. OK, now it's your turn. I'll say the words on the left, and then you reply with the words on the right. I'm bored with my job. I want a new one. Your turn. So that's the first use of the word would. Let's look at another one. The next phrase containing would that we're going to look at is would be. Have a look at this example here. What can you see in the picture? Well, we see someone teaching about health and we see a student learning. And what could we say about this student? Well, at medical college, the would-be doctors learnt about the human body. And here we're using the phrase would-be to mean this. Describe someone with potential to become something, but is not there yet. So, this uh, student wants to become a doctor, but they are not a doctor. They're still in training. So, to say that they're trying to be a doctor, but they are not a doctor, we could say would be. It means in the future. It means possibly later on. Now, how do we use this? Well, again, we use this as an adjective before a noun. And we can see this here. Um, the would-be doctors. So would-be is describing the doctors. So imagine replacing that with pretend or any other adjective you want. The happy doctors, the sad doctors, the young doctors, the old doctors, the would-be doctors. They're all adjectives. And so we use this in the same way. And now for another dialogue 
containing would be. When I get sick, I ask my friend for advice. Don't. She's just a would-be doctor. She hasn't qualified. Let's try that together. I'll say the words on the left, you say the words on the right. When I get sick, I ask my friend for advice. Your turn. Well done. Now let's look at the last three meanings together. So another phrase where we use would is in this phrase here. Would you believe it? Imagine that you know someone who has won a prize. They've done really well, but you didn't expect it. And maybe something says, someone says this to you. Did you hear Abdul came first in the test? And the response is this. I know. Would you believe it? So what's happening here? Well, you're using the phrase, would you believe it, to show that something is very unexpected. I know. Would you believe it? That's incredible. That's amazing. I didn't expect that. And that's what this phrase means. And the form is fixed here. So this is a phrase that doesn't change. You use it as it is. Would you believe it? And you can stop the sentence right there and say no more. It's like an explanation, exclamation. Or you can extend it with a clause that talks about what you didn't believe. Would you believe that Abdul came first? Another phrase that includes would is a phrase would rather. And it also has a similar phrase, would prefer. But they work in slightly different ways. So first of all, looking at would rather. Let's imagine that you go to a restaurant and the waitress comes over and asks you this. Would you like the drinks menu, sir? Now, you're thinking, I want to see the food menu instead. So your response is this. I would rather you showed me the food menu. I would rather you showed me the food menu. And this is used to state a preference for someone else's actions. Your preference is to see the food menu. But you want someone else to do it. So the key thing here is instead of just saying I would rather, you say, I would rather you. And the form here is as follows. First of all, you have the subject, which is I, then would rather, then the subject pronoun you. So this is the person who you want to do the action. So here it's you, it's the waitress you're addressing. And then one more thing. After the subject pronoun, here we use the past simple, not the infinitive, not the present, the past simple. So I would rather you showed me. So showed is the past of show here. So that's how we use would rather, but we could also use would prefer, but there's a very slight difference here. So your time at the restaurant carries on and then someone on your table notices this. Look, the waiter has opened the window. Now you're feeling a bit cold. So your response is this. I would prefer him to shut the window. It's cold. Would prefer him to shut the window. It's almost the same as would rather. But notice a slight difference here. So if we introduce the form. So here the form is first of all the subject again. So the subject here is I. Then would prefer. 
Then we have the object pronoun, him. If it was the subject pronoun, it would be her, um, it would be he. But him is the object pronoun. And the difference here is instead of using the verb in a tense, we use to followed by the infinitive, to shut. I would prefer him to shut the window. So two phrases that are used for similar meanings. I would rather you did this. I would prefer you to do that. But slight grammatical differences in the way that they are used. And now for our final phrase using would. And this one here involves the phrase if you would. And this has some grammatical surprises in it. Uh, first of all, imagine that you are in a public building and you see this door on your left and it, sometimes in public buildings people tell you which way to go. And imagine there's someone like that here. And this person tells you, you need to go through the door on your left, if you would. What does if you would mean here? And isn't it a bit ungrammatical to simply say if you would and end the sentence? Well, the use of it, first of all, is when encouraging or instructing someone to start an activity. So we can see that here. The activity is go through the door on your left. And by saying if you would, you're encouraging that person to do it. And the form is surprisingly, is simply on its own, if you would. Imagine that you're replacing the words with please. You need to go through the door on your left, please. And that is what if you would means when it's just on its own. You need to go through the door on your left, please. You need to go through the door on your left if you would. There is a variation where you can use it with a clause as well. Now, I'm sure you've all been in a queue before of people at some point in your life. And again, sometimes with queues, if they're very long, someone comes along and tells you how to behave in the queue. And maybe they could say this. If you queue on the, if you would queue on the right, thank you. If you would queue on the right. And this means the same again. They're encouraging you to do this particular activity. And if you replace the words, if you would, with please, you get a similar meaning. So imagine saying, please queue on the right, thank you. So those are three more uses of would. Now let's practice them in a longer dialogue. Can you tell me what I should study at college, if you would? I know you like music, but I would rather you studied art. Would you believe it? I've just applied for an art course at Oxford. OK, let's practice the dialogue together. This time you're going to say the words on the left. So you're going to start the conversation. I will say the words on the right. OK, so let's go. Start with the words on the left. I know you like music, but I would rather you studied art. Your turn. So there are five really good advanced uses of the word would that are not often taught but are used commonly by native speakers at a C2 level of English. So make sure you get practicing these uses of would and get them into your own English speaking.